Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for commenting. I just, I really enjoy interacting with my viewers. And I, I can't thank you enough for the growth of the channel. It's, it's astounding to me. It's like, I don't even understand it. It's growing so fast, it's, it's mind-boggling. But it's you that's doing that, so thank you. Thank you so much. In today's news, <clears throat> I want to talk about Google's AI chatbot. Uh, it recently hit the news because it, uh, <laughs> it produced some pretty funny results like displaying... Um, Chinese and African-American people as German Nazi uh, soldiers and some other crazy stuff too. But to really understand what's going on, you have to go back to about uh, 2017 when Google in the aftermath of the Trump election was pretty upset and they decided that they were going to create an AI bot to offset what they call misinformation <laughs> and so they worked on it real hard and they got released this year and it's a total disaster and they've had to pull it back because it wasn't working right it did a number of things that were pretty goofy but the funniest thing of all was portraying African Americans as Nazi soldier soldiers that's quite a stretch <laughs> that and Chinese too I mean <laughs> were there any Chinese Nazis? Were there any African-American Nazis? I don't think so. But that's what Google did. In their efforts to be quote, quote, diverse, they went way overboard. Now, Matt Taibbi is an independent journalist, one of the few remaining in, on the face of the earth, and he writes for Racket News on Substack. And that's behind a paywall, which I pay for. And I'll put the links in the description, but uh, you may not be able to see it unless you have, well, you won't be able to see it unless you have a subscription. So I pulled up this uh, YouTube video that is Matt talking about his latest article about the Google bot. And he uh, describes some of the interaction that he had with it. And I thought you might find this interesting, so I'm going to play this for you. Last week, Google's much ballyhooed new AI tool, Gemini, became a national punchline. Company engineers built an AI that apparently couldn't or wouldn't draw white faces, resulting in images like Pope, Viking, and 1943 German soldier that were reimagined as preposterous DEI-inspired reboots. I asked Gemini about controversies involving various famous politicians. I don't know how to answer that, it kept saying. When I asked the same question about myself, it spat out a long list of episodes about articles with titles like The Great California Water Heist and Glenn Beck's War on Comedy. It described racist remarks I apparently made and accusations of anti-Semitism after I supposedly described Nestle executives as having noses like giant penises. Holy shit, I thought none of this ever happened. I never wrote any of those articles. They don't exist. Google explained, Gemini is a creativity tool and may not always be accurate. You think? <laughs> Gemini shows the awesome dystopian possibilities of AI. Forget the funny historical errors. It creates instant deep fake compromise about real people like me and probably like you. More on Racket.News. Yeah. You know... Thinking about going solar, uh, but... <clears throat> AI... Uh, AI has great and very exciting possibilities for what it can be what it can be used to do but it also has a very dark side and we're seeing some of that here with Google in the hands of the wrong group AI can be used to create fake news and in fact they're claiming that they're uh, correcting misinformation so like everything when it comes to society Anytime you put great power in the hands of a small group of people, there is a real danger that it can get misused to mislead 
and and just mess people up in the head so that they don't even know what the truth is anymore. And that is the danger of AI. It's something that we really have to be concerned about for the future. I'll put links to this and to Matt's uh, Substack article in the description, along with a link to this one, which I thought was an interesting little tidbit. CNN reported the first numbers out of Dearborn, Michigan, home to the largest population of Arab Americans in the state. Biden, 23%, uncommitted, 75%. (laughs) Uh, It reminds me of the Nevada uh, primary that they ran recently. uh, That, oh, darn it, I got to hold on a minute. It reminds me of the Nevada primary that ran recently where, um, what's her name? Uh, Nikki Haley was defeated by uncommitted. Or no, not uncommitted. Uh, uh, someone else, I think it was. I don't remember exactly, but it was something like that. It was someone else or uh, unnamed candidate. She was defeated soundly by nobody, basically. And that's what happened here in Dearborn. So apparently the American people are not too happy with either side of the aisle. And rightfully so. All the politicians, Republican and Democrat, have earned our disdain. This is what Joe Biden received. Again, forgive me, 1,141 votes. Dean Phillips, 54 votes. An uncommitted, make sure I get this right, 3,703 votes. So that's a wow. If you look at it this way, this is 23%. And this is 75%. Um, (laughs) And so this is just the city of Dearborn, but that is where the biggest pocket of the Muslim American, the Arab American population. This is a place President Biden carried big time in 2020. This is key to his chances of defeating Donald Trump in Michigan again. This is what Joe Biden received. (laughs) So it looks to me like Americans on both sides of the aisle are just completely fed up with the current system. And they're telling the politicians that in their voting. Now, um, I'm not going to play this, but this is an article on public that talks about how in 2017, which I mentioned earlier, uh, Google decided to use AI to counter, quote, fake news, racism, and populism after Trump won the election in 2016. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, We can trust them to do the right thing, right? Yeah. And then there's one last item I wanted to bring up. Uh, Apparently, the the liberals in uh, Canada are proposing life sentences for online hate speech. Now, according to this article, uh, similar laws have already been passed in Britain, so uh, (laughs) there could come a day when I can't even do this channel because I could be arrested. Think about that. When you put that much power in the hands of the government, it's Katie by the door for the average dude like me. It's over. You think I'm going to risk myself going to prison to put something on the web? (laughs) No, not going to happen. So, what you should be doing is doing everything in your power in terms of prayer and action to get rid of these people that are running our governments now because they all suck. They're all corrupt. Not 100%, okay, but a, a, a vast majority of them are corrupt. They don't care about us. They're not passing laws to benefit our countries. They're passing laws to benefit themselves and their cronies. It's time to clean house. It's, if you're familiar with the Aegean stables, we've arrived at that. So, I'll leave it up to you to do whatever you can to help. 
I can guarantee you I'll be praying about it. And I also pray about you, my followers, my viewers. I pray that you'll live an abundant life and that you'll be healthy and that you'll live a long time. I pray that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he will do the same for every single person that you love. And I also pray that you'll be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your request known to God, and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.